Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Community spread in the region is concerning. Also tonight, school meals are now in the homes of students. And new changes are coming to the Saipan Airport. In sports, players were seeing red. Some of it wasn't good. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skip Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skip Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. I would recommend websites like the CDC website, Mayo Clinic website, any established um, hospital system or healthcare system. I suspect that Kaiser has a lot of information out there. I would go um, to known websites, WebMD, Healthline, they all have a, a, a lot of information that is reliable and w well thought out. I would much less go to blogs and the individuals who are looking at it from their own perspective and not necessarily science. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team, and you cannot spell team without me. M E. Get a shot. An opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID 19. So let's go for a save, a strikeout, a knockout punch. That's our goal. V for victory. V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win, and we can all celebrate. Wami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, August 11, 2021. New development of a community spread on our sister island is concerning. Hospital Chief Esther Munya shares a message with the public. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero announced that the Delta variant of COVID-19 has now spread on Guam. There are five cases. As for the Commonwealth, there has been one case of the Delta variant. And without hesitation, Hospital Chief Esther Munya and the Governor's COVID-19 Task Force changed entry protocols right away. With this new development on Guam, Munya states she cannot emphasize enough how important it is to reach herd immunity. Our 
concern, our highest concern as a public health uh, indiv- uh, official and our, as a public health depart, you know, uh, agency, our concern is those unvaccinated. Herd immunity is, is, is something that we hope to achieve to protect the CNMI. That's what's going to protect the CNMI. That's what's going to protect the individuals, uh, even if cases like the Delta variant uh, come into the CNMI. Now, decisions to make changes in entry protocols come from epidemiology factors and details that they're finding at the border. Munya states quarantine is important, especially since positive cases are usually confirmed on the fifth day testing. We've been finding cases more on day five, I'll tell you that. So that is one of the reasons why we emphasize the restriction of movement. Uh, there's also the, uh, we are still also finding cases, but not as much uh, compared to day five. Munia addresses community concerns on closing off borders during the pandemic. You know, why don't we just shut down the border and, you know, no, don't let anyone come in. Um, but again, my, my feel uh, uh, all the time is about, well, you know, what's rational too, right? You know, what can we do, um, especially if our residents are coming back because they have to go to school, you know. Um, there, so there's, there's things about that, you know. But um, but we also have, we have the protection, you know. That, that's, the, that's the confidence that I want under, people to understand is that we have the protection, our, you know, uh, from defense, all the task force members that are participating in, in protecting the borders or, you know, part of the collaboration is that they have the PPEs. They're protecting themselves. We can test if people are worried about, about you know, them, uh, you know, getting infected. We can test. We have CBT every week. We have never stopped that every Wednesday. The public is encouraged to continue the three W's and Muni ensures that they will make necessary changes if they have to. Students can now have their school meals at home. The pandemic EBT is out. Today was the second day of distribution of the pandemic EBT benefit, which is basically reimbursements for children who missed out on school meals while taking virtual classes. NAP Administrator Walter Macarana states 6,000 families across the CNMI are to receive the PEBT benefits. They've sorted out the distribution into seven days, which allows them to accommodate 800 families per day. It has been going swell so far. Uh, we've learned from yesterday's uh, experience. Um, and, and commonly, you know, on your first day, it, it be, it's slow. Uh, and it is expected in the morning, um, you know, people will line up early in the morning so that they could get through the line as early as possible. And so, you know, before we start, you know, the line gets longer. Uh, the line was long yesterday, but today it has been going very well. Um, people are pretty happy about the process. The reimbursement is about $7.97 per day. The public school system had 119 virtual days, which means a student missed out on $900 worth of meals. The reimbursement for private school students varies since each school had different schedules. We also want to let families know that these coupons, these benefits don't expire until December 31. So plan it out. Don't spend it all at one time unless you have the resource to store your food, uh, then do so. But spread it out, you know, there's some, um, you know, we have up to the end of the year. Consider, you know, uh, spreading out those benefits so that, you know, we don't overwhelm also the shelves in the stores. Makaranas also points out that if families miss their scheduled day to pick up the benefits, they may do so on open day. The Commonwealth Ports Authority sees an 82% decline in revenues this past fiscal year. No travelers means no revenue for the Commonwealth Ports Authority. CPA Board Chairwoman Kimberly King Hines states that their projected revenue for this fiscal year is only around four million dollars. Normally, our operate our op operating budget is you know thirteen million dollars. That's like a nine million dollar shortfall, right? So it's it's, it's significant. Um, but at this point, right, you know we just have to carefully manage what we have and plan out moving forward. CPA has been using federal money such as the CARES Act funds and other grants to subsidize the shortfall. These funds allow us to be able to cover our debt ratio requirements, 
to, to pay our utilities, to cover for operations and maintenance and personnel. Um, thankfully, we have a very uh, conservative controller who just monitors every single penny that, that we spend and just cuts out any unnecessary expenditure to be able to stretch out those funds. And now that there are ARPA funds, CPA is seeking the governor's help in resuming a full work schedule for their employees. We have been in communications with, with the governor in terms of him uh, using his discretion to be able to supplement CPA so that we can get back to those 80 hours. The CPA board is also looking at adopting a new policy called airport rate methodology. Our current practice now is to charge based on um, passengers, use per passenger. So we're moving away from that basically to now include a rate methodology that assesses um, a terminal rental rate, landing fees, and per use. Um, and the idea behind that basically is to ensure that everybody who utilizes the airport shares in the cost of the operations of the airport. Other jurisdictions are using this practice, which basically means everyone who shares the facility will also share the burden in ensuring the facility continues to operate. Heinz tells us how the rate system will work. For example, you know, our tenants, uh, they would be charged per square footage based on fair market value. Uh, with regards to the, the rental area that they're using, but they will be also charged for, for common areas. And there's a formula basically that uh, is used to determine what that actual cost is. Um, and so this is a transition um, from what is currently being charged under the airline user agreement, um, and we will transition to the airport operating agreement. And we need it to meet today because we have um, some notice and publication requirements uh, that we need to meet to be able to effectuate it. Hines states one of their biggest concerns is who should the rates apply to. These charges will also be applied to government agencies who have a footprint on CPA property, right? So for example, customs and quarantine, um, they would have to start paying their share of the rent as well. And you know, this board is very reluctant and very hesitant to um, charge any fees to our brothers and sisters in the government but it is what it is um, we all have to share the cost it's our airport we have to ensure that we, we, we you know remain solvent and keep open coming up new police officers are sworn in today stay tuned My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. $3,000 could be yours this Friday when the Road to 80 continues with this week's featured sponsor, Naked Fish Bar and Grill. Watch the next drawing Friday, August 13th on the Road to 80 CNMI Facebook page. Register for your shot today at VaccinateCNMI.com or call 682-SHOT. The Road to 80 is brought to you by the Office of the Governor, COVID-19 Task Force, Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, Joe 10 Enterprises, Bridge Capital, Tan Holdings, and more. 
One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. So up until now, the only ways we've had to fight COVID are closing things down, which has been really hard on people here in the CNMI. Um, a lot of people have lost jobs, and a lot of people have lost incomes. Uh, and although it's been effective, it's not sustainable. It's not something we can do forever. Um, vaccination is a way for us to safely resume a lot of those things that bring vibrancy to the CNMI, to hopefully reopen to tourism in some safe capacity to get people back to work in various service industries. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Department of Public Safety takes in 44 new officers. Governor Ralph Torres, DPS Commissioner Robert Guerrero, and other CNMI officials congratulated the new graduates of the 26th police cycle. The ceremony was held at Road Resort this afternoon, where family and friends witnessed their loved ones take on a new role in the community. All 44 cadets who entered the police academy were able to graduate today. Now we turn it over to KUAM to find out the latest news on Guam. Half a day seen in my Guahu si Isaiah Ugin, and here's what's making news on Guam. The entire Department of Defense workforce, including uniform personnel, will be required to get vaccinated against COVID. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin issued a department-wide memo today saying he will seek President Biden's approval to make vaccines mandatory no later than mid-September. In the memo, Secretary Austin said the president had asked him to consider adding the coronavirus vaccine to the list of required immunizations for all service members. Currently, it's still voluntary, but after consulting with top military leaders, Austin will seek the president's formal approval to make it mandatory by next month or immediately upon the licensure of a vaccine by the FDA, whichever comes first. In the meantime, DOD is rushing to push out new guidance for the unvaccinated. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby. I don't have the details for all that today. Uh, uh, we're working hard on what will be a policy directive to come in the coming days uh, that will make it clear what those requirements and restrictions are and how they apply to everybody in the DOD workforce, including uniform personnel. The Pentagon estimates that about 65% of its workforce has been vaccinated. But what about those who refuse to get immunized? We don't have any evidence that suggests that this is a, a widespread problem right now. Um, and um, I mean, I, I think members of the military uh, understand when you sign up for the military that there are requirements laid upon you. And, and uh, some of those requirements include being healthy and fit and ready to serve. Secretary Austin indicates that the next few weeks will be spent preparing for this transition. It is every expectation that commanders, uh, once this new vaccination program is in place, i.e. it's mandatory, are going to implement that, that new program with skill and with professionalism, the same skill and professionalism they do now for existing mandatory vaccines, uh, as well as compassion. DOD says it will be keeping a close eye on rising infection rates and the impact on troop readiness. Secretary Austin closed by saying he will not hesitate to act sooner if he feels the need to do so. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUM.com or downloading the KUM News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Wahoo CIA Isaiah Coming up, once again, the Dove League takes off like a bird carrying a message of goodwill, sportsmanship, and camaraderie. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. 
Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If, you're, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm going to have Vince do here is extend his arms up here and all he's going to do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see he's already in good position. Now he, all he's going to do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's going to do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. Buenos sports fans, there's a good reason why dread rhymes with red. It's because of the dreaded red card. Dread red. No gain without pain in the M League. Spring League champions Tan Holdings Football Club won their first game of the 2021 Summer League and so did Pirey FC. Sunday afternoon, these two Clytons, championship aspiring teams, clashed head on. Jerch Angeles just misses the header. Pirey's turn, Ryu. With the goal line drive, he beats a couple of defenders, fakes out the goalie, he scores! Pirate takes the lead 2-1. Jarrett Yoba also scored a goal earlier in this game for Pirate FC. Pirate with the corner, Ajani Burrell, the header over the crossbar. And then, the next minute, Tempers blew up on a free kick. Whoa, look at this. 
Fight. Trouble. Push in. These guys don't like each other. <laughs> Red card. Wow. Ejection. Is that Berla? Two red cards were given out, one on Jeff Sale on Pyrie and Joshua Waldo for THFC. Because of an earlier red card, THFC had only nine players against ten. Players with a red card are suspended for a game, must pay a fine before they can play again. Here's that free kick finally. For the equalizer, through his teammate straight to Pyrie, who's able to run out the clock. After the game, it's all lovey-dovey and hugs. Pyrie wins this big game 2-1. to one. Meanwhile, next door in the Dove League, there was lots of red, yeah, red jerseys. Code red Sunday at the Cobraville Training Center. Forget the men for a while, let's walk down to see the women's action when the place turns into a giant daycare center. Pyre FC versus MP United, two storied franchises with deep, rich history. Lindsey Davis, former NMI national player, still getting it done here in the Masters division until Julie Hall stops her. And that leads to this, Natalie Hill shoots wide left. MPU, Brianna Copeland, ooh, just misses. If at first you don't succeed, try again, but don't hit the post. More, almost. The blast, straight to Marlene, the stopper. Pyrie threatening, but that pass slips through. Marlene says, get that thing out of here. Lindsey Davis, the corner kick. A CK right to the other team. Hey, it happens. Lindsey aims for my camera and fortunately misses. Patty Coleman and Lindsey playing the two women game while Marlene Lumbay is playing the one woman game. Pyrie, relentless in their attack. <laughs> Pyrie walks off winners 3-0. In the novice division, head-on collision between Pyrie 1 and Pyrie 2 ended in a draw 2-2. Two, two. Girls say bye-bye, see you next Sunday. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! We're in a race whether we know it or not. If we all get vaccinated, we can end this pandemic together. And build our new normal. But first, we have to get to the finish line. Enough for Molly to be out. Let's vaccinate, see you tonight. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers. Come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Mariana's Trekking, 323-8735. Drop into Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym for a quick and healthy meal. Fast food that's good for you. Our August smoothie of the month has oatmeal, peanut butter, raisins, and cinnamon. A healthy blend of 450 calories, perfect for a meal replacement or a supplement. Shake, shake, shake it up at Gold's Gym. All right, here's your weather report for today. The high, 89, the heat index though, 104, and that's what counts. The low, 82, 75% humidity. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, some isolated showers here and there. Easterly winds, 10 to 15. High, 88, low, 80, seas one to three feet. That's about as calm as it gets here. Sunrise at one past six in the 
the morning, a high tide at 9.36, followed by a low tide at 4.26, and then sunset at 6.42. And that is your midweek edition of the New Sports and Weather. Thank you so much for watching KSPN2, and hopefully we'll see you back here on a Friday night. Good night.